Hello YouTube, this is Braden with Midwest Websites, your solution for business website design and search engine optimization. Think Google hates your SEO? Find out where you stand with them by hiring one of our SEO auditors. Link in the description below. Now today we're going to be going over a cPanel feature that will allow you to get some information about the traffic that's actually reaching the sites on your server. This is a little known feature that is actually available with most cPanels, and it goes by AW Stats. So, in order to find AW Stats in your cPanel here, you can usually just type in AW Stats into your search filter, and it will bring the button up so that you can easily find it and click on it to go in and take a look at the stats for any given site on the server. As you can probably guess, I'm using a GoDaddy shared cPanel environment which is going to look a little different than the traditional cPanel installation. That's okay. If yours looks a little different, don't panic. It will probably still have this AW Stats feature. When you click on AW Stats, you see every domain and subdomain that's set up on your cPanel. Some of these are going to look a little weird in all likelihood because cPanel has a tendency to add a subdomain for every domain that you add in as well. Don't worry about the odd ones, just look for the one that's tied in with the website that you're looking for. Since I've been using example.midwestwebsites.com for the last few videos, I'm going to go ahead and check on the traffic for that one, just so I can see what's going on, make sure that we don't have any random bots or other traffic issues coming into play here. When you open this up for the first time, it's a lot to take in. There's just a giant page of data tons of things to look at. We're going to go through and hit some of the highlights so that you have kind of an idea of where you should be focusing your attention when you're navigating through here. Now this first section here with the graph and the numbers is just going to be a generic traffic overview. Typically it's going to have the last 12 months or the current calendar year set up for you by default. I've only been running the site for a couple months here so we're just going to take a look at the numbers here for late July and early August. We're starting here, and I can see that we've had some visits, quite a few more in August than in the latter part of July, but more than I would expect for a site that literally doesn't do anything. Its sole purpose has been to showcase different elements of WordPress websites up to this point in time. So let's take a look and see what our daily traffic looks like in the next section. Rather than breaking it up month by month, it's actually going to break it up day by day for us. So we can see how many visitors we've had, how many pages they've visited, how much bandwidth they've used, that sort of thing. This can be a very valuable tool for you to kind of see if you've been getting spammed or if you suspect that bots are running amok in your website and slowing things down. It's designed to kind of show you very broad strokes. Do not treat this as a substitute for any kind of analytics program. It's simply not an analytics program. This is broad stroke data that is designed to kind of help you see if there's a potential issue should you see something strange start cropping up with your website or if you're just curious about where your visitors are coming from. Now, looking at the graph here, most of the days up to this point in the month have a pretty standard amount of traffic. There isn't much, which is kind of what I would expect. But on August 3rd and 4th, our bars are quite a bit higher than everything else. We had a lot more visitors and a lot more going on with the site those days. That's a little peculiar. August 4th, I could possibly see since that was a day where I was recording videos, so I might have a little more traffic than normal, but August 3rd I certainly wasn't, so that's a little bizarre. We're going to go down here and take a look at a few other things. It's about the last week broken up for us here. Hours of the day down here for whatever day we're going to be looking at. And we're going to see the IP addresses that have been hitting the website down here. This is going to be one of the bigger areas you're going to want to look at, in addition to the section right above it for locales, where your traffic is coming from. Now, we're a US-based company. 
it's possible that some other countries might stumble on us by accident, but it does seem a little peculiar that we're getting this many hits from China. So there's probably some funny traffic business going on here. Some of these IP addresses probably route back to Chinese IP addresses in some way, shape, or form. Now, if you're not on a shared server, you can have your server admin go in and start instituting blocks on given IPs or IP ranges. If you want to do some trickier things with your blocks, if you want to do something with your firewall or your HT access file to kind of block those IPs, those are options that are available to you if you are on a shared server. We're not going to go into too much detail about them here. Talk with your web developer or server administrator to discuss further options in more detail. If you're just curious about where an IP address is coming from, you can actually just copy the IP address. And then if you open a new tab and head over to Google, you can actually just type in whose IP is, and then paste in the IP. And you can actually get a general idea of where it's coming from. I randomly picked one here, and sure enough, it's coming from China. This is another good reason to invest in firewalls for any type of business website, as you do have the ability to usually block IP addresses geographically by country. So if you are seeing a major uptick in hits, from a country that shouldn't be visiting your website or that is notorious for having bots or hackers, Russia, China, etc. Then a firewall is going to be the appropriate solution to look at in order to curb this unnecessary and unwanted traffic to your website. Now if we scroll down here a little further, we can take a look at a few other statistics that AW Stats has gathered for us. We can take a look and see the robots, spiders, etc. that search engines employ to look at pages and start the indexing process. You'll have a few different ones listed here. Googlebot and a few others are going to show up pretty consistently. That's normal. Usually there's nothing too significant to worry about with these. If you do see a strange entry, definitely point it out to your web developer or server admin. But on the whole, there's not going to be a lot to worry about in this area. Further down, you can actually start to get a little more information about what your visitors are doing on your website. You can see how long they've stuck around with this visits duration area. You can come down a little further here and see which pages they've visited. You can see their operating systems and browsers in some cases. And at the very, very bottom, you can even see how effective their landing experience was. Generally speaking, codes like 301 or 302 are going to be perfectly fine. If you're seeing other codes like 404 or 500 or 503, these are warning signs that something's not quite right with the website or the server. You're definitely going to want to take a closer look at those if they're coming up in large numbers. You may see the occasional hiccup. No server platform is going to be 100% perfect, but generally speaking, 500 type error codes or 404s should be very few or far between with an optimal business website. And that covers our AW Stats tutorial. As always, thanks very much for watching the video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe down below. Definitely helps the channel, definitely helps get this information out to those who need it. And have a great rest of the day.